Mert Strapper here with the latest Big Brother Canada evictee, Queen Koozie herself. Uh, Koozie, after Renee won HOH and before the nominations, you went up to her and said you humbly wanted to ask her not to put you on the block. After you were nominated, you told her to shut up. Can you outline your relationship with Renee and what you thought of her game? So with Renee, I felt like, you know, I, when I was HOH, I made a conscious decision to leave people that I was working with, leave their advice and their suggestion and save her and carry her under my wing. Second time, she was on the block um, when I was HOH as well because of the, you know, the, the chain of safety thing. And still I ensured that she was not going home. First chance she gets, she puts me on the block. I've asked her for mercy, deservingly so. And she doesn't do that. I thought that maybe at the last minute, she would switch and put up Daniel instead of me, but she didn't. So in all annoyedness, I'm just like, Renee, I don't need to hear what you're saying. Just shut up. <laughs> um, so it was coming from a place of like being annoyed with her game decision. Um, she, she failed to have mercy on me where I, I, I had, had season wide. So yeah, that's, that's, that's where it stands with Renee. But I think that comment actually rubbed her in a, in a more out of the game way so I had to make sure that you know she knows that this is me reacting to a game move that she did and I just I didn't want to hear it I didn't want to hear her saying I have to strike while the iron is hot queen cruzy I'm just like I don't want to hear all of that don't want to hear it yeah do you regret going for the money in the veto competition now I want to regret it for sure um but also I'm just thinking that to open those bags I opened them as well, thinking that there's a puzzle piece inside. So it was also part of my game of looking for a puzzle piece. A lot of puzzle pieces were inside bags. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just try, eh, maybe let me just go and keep going until I get the money. It's not hard to open those bags. I don't think it took me up to 30 seconds. I was off by nearly a minute. So I don't think that that was where I fell. Um, where I fell was not finding the puzzle piece in the pet room. Um, it was inside like a, a cat bed and I couldn't find it for a while. That's what really took my time. Um, and maybe a mistake with, with the puzzles. I had them in the wrong order as well. Um, so those could have really strengthened my time. Had I not even gone for the money, I think I would have lost by just a bit still. So I'm on the block, I'm going home, but I leave with the thousand dollars. So I want to also regret that decision. But at the same time, I'm thinking I might still have lost and walked up with nothing. So, yeah. Who was originally responsible for the Crown Alliance and who was its leader? Um, I think in essence, I would say me and Johnny. Johnny was very passionate about it um, because it's, he respected the move. He respected it because it's something that he wanted to do and he just didn't know where to start or if he would have support. A lot of people were afraid to make that move and he respected me because I was fearless about it. So it originated on my move but I can't take credit and say I am the originator of it. I do think that it now stuck and I, I, I somewhat am, am seen as the crown itself because of, you know, Queen Cruz and where it originated and that I kept winning HOHs well twice. I, I don't want to say I kept winning. I only won them twice, but it's enough to say that, you know, I was solid in the crown and um, whoever had the seat of HOH is the crown at that moment. And I'm the only one that did. Can you rank the members of the Crown Alliance in the order of how close you were with them? So name the person you were the closest to and then keep going down the list to the one you were the least closest to. Oh, that's a hard one because at first, before the Crown, there was the shadiest bunch. <laughs> so I want to say that I was close. I would go with Anika first and then Daniel. Um, however... This is just closeness, but had it been like, let's say Daniel and Hope on the on the block, who would I have saved? I would have probably saved Hope, not because, um, 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 but just because I think Hope has better chances to help me in the game. So there's closeness in terms of friendship, but there's closeness in terms of who have I got a working relationship with? And I would have chosen, so I'll give you an order of who I would have chosen to save first. Mm. I would have gone with Hope, Johnny, Daniel, Anika. Yeah. Um, okay. 
Um, I'd like to ask about your relationship with Ty. When the letter situation happened with Zach, Ty, and Hope, you told them that they saved the information to use when it was advantageous. By the end of your game, you said that you were willing to sacrifice members of the Crown to keep Ty. So what was the nature of your relationship with Ty? So with Ty, it began really strong. Um, I said it from the beginning, you know, Ty is my number one. My safety isn't him. And, you know, then the letter thing happened and there was wrong on both sides. And I, I think, you know, there was wrong on both sides. However, that now shifted Ty and I's relationship. I thought that from then on, he would be probably coming after me. So I tried to distance myself so that I can take a shot at him without feeling guilty about it. Um, and it would be something that he would also respect, like, okay, you took a shot at me because you know that I would vice versa. However, I don't think that it was like that on his side. I think he respected me throughout. And for me, it was important to get back to that because I understood that even when I hated him, he still had high regard for me. So um, I can only, you know, I can only return to love at that point. You got into an argument with Daniel C where you said that he was spineless despite him being a member of the crown. What happened between you to sour that relationship? I think it's because it was very evident that they chose each other and their friendship is the one that stuck more than a game relationship. Had Daniel been thinking game-wise rather than friendship, I know that he had, um, you know, they had their promise to each other and he had to honor that final two, but final twos change every day in the game. Um, if somebody leaves, you have to make a new one or you think of a new one at least, or you think of what is happening in the game, what's better for you. And at that point, I feel like he failed to think of what's better for him. And, um, you know, he chose to stick by Anika. And maybe that's, that is what he wants to do. That is the person that he is. And that's the, the, the game that he came to play, a game of loyalty to the person that he said. But I, I expected that as the player that he is or the player that he presented himself to be to me and the fan of the show that he is, he knows that things change in the matter of one hour. I feel like at that point it should have changed, but he didn't want to one because I feel like he was also afraid of not winning to me. He thinks that he can win over Anika, but he feels that if I'm standing with him at the final two, he won't win. And if I'm in the game with Ty, he's not winning. So it came from a point of being scared as well and being scared of, does it make him a target to these girls? He's scared of these girls. Um, so that's, that's where that spineless comment came from. What is more important when playing Big Brother, a good social game or being good at competitions? Um, I think a, a game being an all-rounder, performing good in, in competitions where, you know, it's anyone's game. Um, some things are strength and some people don't have strength. Like myself, I, I struggled very hard in uh, the Get a Grip competition. I struggled very hard and I got off early, thankfully. <laughs> um, but it's, it's important to be an all-rounder. Um, social is what will take you further than competitions because you're not going to get to play every competition. You're not going to win every competition either. So it's important to have a social game first and foremost. But if you don't, because you're a lone wolf like Ty, then the game has to carry you far. The, the competition wins. You've got to have it on lock like Ty does. How big of a Big Brother Canada fan were you before you were cast? And were there any previous players you modeled your game after? I am a very big Big Brother Canada fan um, and just Big Brother worldwide fan. Um, so I, I, will, I think I would fit into the super fan, super fan zone. Um, anyone that I based my game off of, I have people that I definitely look up to um, and I admired a, a lot of aspects about them. Um, of course, I'm not, I, I don't think I'm anything like them though, but I did appreciate their gameplay. I'll mention Neda. Um, season two, Aika, season five. Um, I can't be like Dimitri because Dimitri was just a comp piece, but I did appreciate his game. Kevin Martin, season five, the winner. Um, yeah, he was a, a well, he was well rounded. He won competitions when they were crucial, and he had a good social game. He he played the hell of it. I like uh, Dre, season five as well. Um, Jed, season nine. Uh, season 10, I can only love, <laughs> I love Betty. Um, and also, uh, I really did have an appreciation for um, Kevin Jacobs. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Have a great rest of your day.